Hey guys, I just thought I'd do another video about the basics of malting. Um, just because the video I had done over three years ago now is uh, pretty bad quality and uh, I do things a little bit differently now, so I just thought I'd show you guys how I do things differently. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my videos, this is a good place to start because I'm just going over some basic things on, on how you can mulch your own barley at home. Uh, what I've got here is the Maris Otter barley that I grew last summer. This is five pounds. Now there are three stages in making malt. Um, there is the steeping phase. That's where you soak the barley and let it absorb water. Then you have the germination phase where you're actually letting it grow a little bit. And then the kilning phase where you're drying it out and then roasting it. But before you do anything, uh, you have to find out the moisture content of your barley. Uh, even though it looks totally dry, there is a little bit of water in there. When you go to steep it, you want the barley to absorb a certain amount of water. Uh, in the case of a pale malt, it's about 42 to 43 percent moisture content. And the reason you do this is because you want the germination to be as even as possible. So you want the growth rate uh, among all the barley seeds to be the same. Um, just for consistency. <clears throat> and you want the enzymes to develop fully. You don't want the barley to stop growing at a certain point because there isn't, a, isn't enough moisture in there. Uh, so that's why you shoot for a target moisture content. Uh, now, how do we calculate this? Well, first of all, to find out the moisture content of the barley, you take a little one ounce sample. So this here is one ounce, which I measured very accurately on this little scale here, little micro scale, goes up to three decimal points. Um, because it's such a small sample, you wanna be very accurate. Now I'm gonna put this in the oven at 215 degrees for three hours. What that does is it just drives off all the moisture in there. Um, and I end up with my bone dry weight. So let's pretend I've done this already um, and I've weighed it again. And this one ounce sample now weighs 0.95 ounces. Uh, that means that you have a 5% moisture content. So you just, right, you're subtracting the 0.95 from one ounce and you get uh, 0.05, which is 5%, right? Um, so multiplying that figure to this five pounds, I would have a bone dry weight of 4.75 pounds or four pounds and 12 ounces. So if I take my bone dry weight and I divide that by 0.57, I will get my target steep weight. Now why 0.57? Well, I'm going for a 43% moisture content and the 0.57 represents the 57% dry weight of the total weight after steeping. So 4.75 divided by 0.57 equals 8.333 pounds. Um, so eight and one third pounds. After I steep this a bunch of times, um, when it hits that eight pounds and five ounces, that means that it's going to have a 43% moisture content in it. And then I can start germinating. When I'm steeping, I'm just gonna fill this up with water and I'm going to keep it in a cool or cold place um, for eight hours. Now the reason I want the temperature down, I want it below 15 degrees Celsius. And the reason for that is there's lots of bacteria on the husks of the barley. And if that's allowed to multiply, your barley goes off pretty quickly. It'll smell kind of yogurty at first. Um, and then after even longer at warm temperatures, it'll, it'll get really disgusting, actually. A really awful smell. Um, so you keep it cool. 
Um, I like to keep it outside if, uh, if it's cool enough, if it's during the winter, or in a garage, something like that. Um, and after eight hours, I'm going to drain it and let it rest for another eight hours. This is an important step because the grain has to absorb oxygen. If it doesn't absorb oxygen, then you might suffocate the grain and it, it won't grow anymore. It may take up to four steeps to reach my target moisture content. That's pretty normal. So I'll soak it for eight hours, let it rest for eight hours, I'll soak it again for eight hours, and let it rest for eight hours like that until I get that target steep weight. Um, what you do is you just, you know, after you drain it, you weigh it and see where you're at. And then uh, you can you get a pretty good idea of how much longer you have to steep it for if you uh, weigh it while you're doing it. Okay, I'm on to day two of germination. Um, it took four steeps to get to my target steep weight. And those steeps were each eight hours. Uh, because of the increase in volume of these kernels, I've had to just split it up into two containers. And the rootlets are coming out quite nicely. I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, it's all looking pretty consistent, pretty uniform. They're all the same size. Uh, I've been keeping it in my garage at about 14 degrees Celsius. That's just because that's the, the temperature it is. Um, anywhere from 14 to 18 degrees Celsius is fine for the germination phase. Now this should take another maybe four, maybe five days to fully germinate. And then uh, I'll show you how to actually test to see if it's uh, fully converted. So this malt took seven days to reach this stage and it's ready to go into the kiln. I didn't do anything to it. It just stayed in these bins um, at about 14 degrees. And that was just sitting in my garage. Every once in a while, um, you know, two, three times a day, I'd come in and just stir it up a little bit just to make sure uh, the moisture was consistent throughout um, and it didn't get too warm. But you don't really have to worry about that when you're malting such a small amount. Okay, let me show you how to tell when your malt is done. Um, first thing you want to look at is the length of the acrospire and that you'll find along the back of the grain. Uh, you can kind of see it through the husk but usually just sort of, whoops. Okay, let's try that again. So you just uh, tear it open and it'll sort of pop out. And you want the acrospire to be about three quarters of the length of the grain. This one's kind of short. It's actually only about half. Uh, but our next test is actually more important. And that's to see how well modified it is. You take the starch sheet part out and rub it against your finger. Now if it forms a chalky paste just like it did there then you know your malt is fully modified um, if it just balls up and makes these gummy sort of balls and doesn't spread out at all then it's not quite done it's been actually eight days since I started germinating these and they're ready for the kiln so what I did was just air dry them for 24 hours and I did this just with uh, a fan and I had them on these racks so the air would flow through and it works you know really well it's at room temperature um, the rootlets dry out really well and I weighed it and it's actually at 33 percent moisture which is great that's right where I want it actually for this um, kilning schedule that I'm doing now normally what I usually do is I kiln the malt at under 50 degrees Celsius for, well, until the moisture content is below 10%. Once it gets below 10%, the enzymes won't uh, get as damaged 
um, and they'll be safe so you can raise the temperature and actually cure it at that stage. Um, but if it's over 10% then you risk run the risk of having a lower diastatic power because the enzymes will get damaged if uh, there's more moisture in there. Um, but I just read an article and it's on my blog about kilning schedules and flavor development and what that article showed was that you get more multi flavors if you kiln at a slightly higher temperature when the grain is at uh, 35 to 25 percent moisture content. So that's what I'm going to try uh, for this batch. It's at 33 percent and I'm going to start kilning it at 60 degrees and slowly raise it up to about 68 um, and I'm going to do that for I'm thinking it's going to be about six hours and at that stage I'm hoping the moisture content will actually be down to about 10 percent and then I'm just going to start um, curing it at about 80 or 90 degrees. Uh, for my heat source my oven doesn't go low enough, it doesn't reach those temperatures. I think my lowest temperature is about 70 degrees. So what I'm using is one of these little hot plates. Oops. And the great thing about these is they have a little um, thermostat built in and you can adjust the temperature. So you just have to figure out, you know, um, what it actually what temperature you can reach in your oven and just make a little mark on the dial because it's not going to be the same as what, what the dial reads. Um, yeah, and the cord just goes right under the door. Most ovens have enough space for a cord to fit under there. And then the extension cord I've got is sort of sitting in the drawer underneath the oven and it's uh, kind of tucked in out of the way. Um, so that works pretty good. Again, you know, you can probably fit two more shelves in here, but I'm just doing <clears throat> five pounds because I have some grain left over that I'm going to be using. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to have a fan. I used to put a fan on top of the oven vent just to get the air flowing through, but uh, with such a small amount, it uh, really isn't necessary. Um, it, it dries fast enough, just like that. All right, let's start killing. And there it is. It spent three hours at 60 degrees, two hours at 79 degrees, and two hours at 90 degrees. Now, last thing you wanna do is just rub all the rootlets off of here. Because they actually affect the flavor of the beer. You want to get those out of there. It takes a few minutes, but they just fall through. 